Hey folks, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to go over the solar wind. So let's get started. So what is the solar wind, first of all? Well, we say the solar wind consists of a stream of charged particles which escape from the upper atmosphere of the sun. It flows outwards as a plasma at great speed and consists mainly of electrons, protons and alpha particles. And this reminds me of cosmic rays because remember cosmic rays are made up mainly of protons and alpha particles, so they're quite similar. And remember plasma is a fourth state of matter in addition to solids, liquids and gases. And I like to think of plasma as a sort of mix between liquids and gases. But to be more specific, it's the state of matter in which electrons have been removed or separated from atomic nuclei and atoms. It goes on to say that as a result of the high energy of the particles, they are able to escape the sun's gravity. As the wind moves away from the sun, its speed increases up to around 800 km per second and it reaches the Earth in around 3 days after leaving the sun. Were it not for the Earth's magnetic field, the solar wind would have a major impact on the Earth. Mercury, which is much nearer the sun and has a weaker magnetic field, had its atmosphere stripped away by the solar wind. Mars also once had an atmosphere and water on its surface till its magnetic field disappeared billions of years ago. But the Earth's magnetic field prevents this from happening as it deflects the solar wind around the planet. So, in actual fact, the Earth's magnetic field is very important for life to exist on Earth because without it, we wouldn't have an atmosphere and it would have been stripped away a long time ago. And in this picture, you can hopefully see the charged particles as part of the solar wind being emitted from the Sun. And then you can see that the magnetic field lines around the Earth have been distorted in some way, but also notice that they're deflecting the charged particles from the solar wind around the main regions of the Earth and into the poles. And it's these poles, the North Pole and South Pole, where the aurorae are produced. So based on that, it says that the effects of the solar wind can still be observed in phenomena such as the aurorae, which is the northern and southern lights. And their specific names are the aurora borealis and the aurora australis. And the reason these nice effects of green and purple lights are produced is because cosmic particles trapped in the Earth's magnetic field come down into the atmosphere near the North and South Poles. They then interact with the air molecules like nitrogen and oxygen and it says that nitrogen and oxygen molecules will become excited and when they return to their ground state, just thinking about energy levels, then they emit light. And the light that is emitted corresponds to the green and purple regions of the visible light spectrum. So here you can see some of the nice colours in a specific example. Just to show you a quick simulation to help you visualise this, if you just focus your attention on this diagram on the right, you can see we've got the Earth with the Earth's magnetic fuel pattern. So these magnetic field lines have this sort of regular circular shaped pattern either side of the Earth and that's when there's no solar wind. However, when there is a solar wind, you can see the magnetic field lines around the Earth become distorted. And this collision between the charged particles in the solar wind with the Earth's magnetic field creates this sort of supersonic shock wave. And the term given to the Earth's magnetic field once it's been distorted is called the magnetosphere. So what actually happens to charged particles in the solar wind as they approach the Earth's magnetic field? Well, if I click play here, focus on this particle here. You can see that it starts undergoing some helical motion as it moves towards the Earth and it's also pushed towards the North Pole in this case. Let me just show you that again. So it's travelling straight until it reaches the magnetosphere and then it starts entering the magnetic field at an angle and therefore it's going to undergo helical motion until it reaches one of the Earth's poles. And we said that this will produce nice effects like the aurorae, like these green lights produced here. Lastly, going back to the notes, there are other effects that are produced by the solar wind. So it says that other effects include the plasma tails of comets that always point away from the sun and geomagnetic storms that can change the direction of magnetic field lines and create strong currents and power grids on Earth. And you should also be aware that the exposure to high concentrations of cosmic rays can have serious health implications, disrupting our cell DNA and causing cancer. And it's thought that if you're someone who travels a lot and goes on aeroplanes, then you're going to be experiencing a higher number of cosmic rays than someone who stays on the ground. And therefore, the risk to your health through ionising radiations is going to be bigger than if you weren't someone who travelled a lot. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.